disengaged, how the narcissist views you and your replacement. Disengagement is when the narcissist ceases the formal relationship with you. Some people use the term discard, but as I've explained, I don't like that because it suggests some degree of finality. And of course, we disengage from you, but there is always a risk that we will come back and hoover you, either to draw you back into the former relationship again, or just to obtain fuel, character traits, residual benefits, and assert control over you. Therefore, disengagement is the appropriate term. But when you've been disengaged from and replaced by somebody else, what is the mindset of the narcissist in those circumstances? You will, of course, be painted black. That's why you were gotten rid of. You were gotten rid of because you created a significant and substantial problem for the narcissist. Listen to the video, Five Reasons the Narcissist Gets Rid of You, Discards, Disgages from You. That'll explain the principal reasons why that occurs. But, when you have been disengaged from, what's the mind of the narcissist towards you? Further, what's the mindset of the narcissist towards the person that has replaced you? This video is applicable to all appliances in the fuel matrix, but chiefly is applicable to the situation of a former intimate partner primary source replaced by a new intimate partner primary source. So, the narcissist gets rid of a girlfriend and has a new girlfriend. Separates from his wife, has a new girlfriend. Or, the narcissist, she gets rid of her boyfriend and has a new boyfriend. It can be applicable to where an intimate partner secondary source is disengaged from, and the narcissist then moves to a different one. However, disengagement of secondary sources is unusual and fairly rare. But the mindset here is just as applicable. So if you do find yourself in a position of having been disengaged from by the narcissist, whether you're an intimate partner secondary source, namely somebody that you're having an affair with a narcissist or you're dating or you're a booty call or a side piece, or a non-intimate secondary source, family member, colleague, friend, then the mindset remains the same. Remember that in many instances, when you're disengaged from, you are effectively persona non grata. The narcissist gets rid of you, jettisons you, and doesn't give you any more thought unless you happen to come back up on the radar in some way. And that might be, for instance, by you saying to the narcissist, I want answers from you, or I want some property back, or you owe me money, or you turn up at a place where the narcissist is as well. So in the circumstances, what's going on in the mind of the narcissist when he is with that new person, your replacement, and you come up on the radar. So, what goes through the mind of the narcissist, for instance, if he's out with his new partner and he sees you? What goes through the mind of the narcissist if he's sat at home with the new girlfriend and he receives a text message from you? What goes through the mind of the narcissist if he's strolling along a river with his new partner and... He sees somebody on the other riverbank who looks like you and reminds him of you. As I've explained ordinarily, when you're disengaged from, it's as if you've disappeared into oblivion. But you can come back on our radar by entering our spheres of influence in a variety of ways. And when that happens, what's going on in the mind of the narcissist? What I'm about to explain to you encompasses that mindset the way the narcissist regards you as the former IPPS, former IPSS, or former NISS, and at the same time, how the narcissist regards the relevant person who has replaced you and has come into the fuel matrix. Understand, if you're dealing with a lesser or mid-range narcissist and use the narc detector to determine if that's what they are, 
this is what's going on in the unconscious. This is what's driving the narcissist's behavior, but he doesn't realize it. When you're dealing with the greater and the ultra, this is, in effect, what the narcissist is actively thinking. This is the mindset that is being demonstrated towards you. But in either instance, this is the way that the narcissism regards you. You messed up. I gave you the world. I really did. I truly gave you everything you ever wanted from someone. I know I did, because this is what I always do. I always deliver. You did not, though, and you let me down. Despite everything I said, everything that I did, you failed. Oh, I hear you bleat on about how you love me like nobody else. You protest about all the things that you sacrificed for me, all the things that you did for me, and how you put me ahead of everything else in order to please me, to make me happy. Stop going on about yourself, will you, as it's not very becoming. This hysteria surrounding how you pulled out all of the stops, gave your all, and did everything that I ever asked of you, even doing some things that you didn't like, is completely pathetic. Oh, I see. You complain about it now, but you didn't at the time, did you, you charlatan? You disgust me. I'm well rid of you, and in a way I suppose I must thank you, because if you hadn't failed, you would not have made me realise how you and I did not belong together. I did everything I could to make it work, but you let me down. Thank goodness I woke up and saw it, otherwise I would still be trapped by you. You at least enabled me to realise how flawed you actually are, and I won't be making that mistake again. Not a chance of that happening. In fact, as testament to just how wonderful I am and how brilliantly I treat you, I have someone else. What do you mean I wasted no time in moving on? Why shouldn't I? I'm not going to sit around and bemoan how you let me down. That's not going to serve any purpose. And besides, I can't help it if people want to be with me. It's only natural. Yes, I'm with Lauren now. She's wonderful. She's everything I've ever wanted. And I am her soulmate. I know that her and I are going to be very happy together. She's the one. I know I thought that of you, but you misled me. Lauren isn't like that. I'm moving in with her next week. It makes perfect sense. I want to be with her all of the time. She's beautiful. Just look at her, perfectly put together. She is so shiny and new. I'm head over heels in love with her. I cannot be apart from her. Take a look. If you had been more like her, then I wouldn't have had to punish you the way that I did. That's not going to happen with Lauren. No way. I can only see a bright and beautiful future for us. I hope she falls pregnant soon, as our child would be such a wonder to behold. Thank God I didn't have a child with you. Imagine that. Good God, that would have been a terrible thing, having to share a child with a monster like you. Lauren will be a first-class mother. We've already talked about it, and I can tell that she is keen. She adores me, and always will. Not like you. You had your chance, but you messed it up. You only have yourself to blame. Oh, I know what you are like. You will try and make out that it was me that was the problem, but I know it was you. So do all my friends and yours. Oh yes, I've already spoken to them, and they agree that I am better off without you, and that Lauren and I are the perfect couple. She always knows what to say, so you see. She understands me like nobody else does. She gets me. She's the only one. I bought a new phone with an increased megapixel camera because there'll be so many photographs I have to take of Lauren and I. I want all those perfect moments captured so I can show the world how happy we are together. I know that other relationships have not worked out, but that's what happens when you get duped by harpies like you. Lauren isn't like that. She's not like you. We've already booked a holiday away already. Two weeks. In the sunshine, we're going to have such a brilliant time being together in paradise. You can expect plenty of postings on Facebook, so feel free to look in on them. I know you will. You can expect all my friends to be talking about us. We are the golden couple. 
Thank goodness I found her. This is it. This is the one for me. We just fit together. It is as if she knows what I am thinking. She listens and learns and then always knows the right thing to say and to do. It is marvellous and just shows why we belong together. I know you will need to know all of this because, well, I deserve to be happy after what you did to me. You should be happy for me. You should. That's if you say you'd love me. You tell me that you do. Not that it matters now. I have a perfect love with Lauren, and this is the one that will last. I imagine we'll be married by the summer. It will be a glorious ceremony, and she'll look absolutely stunning, polished and gleaming, stood just the way I want and looking at me with rapturous adoration. I couldn't be happier. I really could not. I have my soul made. I am her angel sent from heaven to make her happy, and I will do that because I am so good at doing that for people. Everything is going to be just wonderful. And you had your chance, but you blew it. I get so excited when I find someone new, and when I know they will be better than you. Someone who puts me first, rather than themselves. Someone who deserves me. Someone who is not you. Someone who is shiny, new, and improved.